Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a healthier, more compassionate, and sustainable world. For those of you who are regular listeners, you already know how deeply committed I am to doing what I can to bring together the highest level of educational and inspirational guests and content to showcase for you as possible. The truth is that we are all on this journey together, and the more we can work together as a community, the better. To make a donation to support the continuance of this program, go to the TeresaNicasio.com website and click on the Donate button at the bottom of the page. If you have products or services you'd like to share with my large and growing audience as a sponsor or advertiser, you can click the same button or message me directly. My email address is Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. And I should clarify, to spell Teresa, it's T-H-E-R-E-S-A, Nicasio is N like Nancy, I-C-A-S-S-I-O dot com. Be sure to join us next week when we'll be talking with Adam Hart, the author of The Power of Food, about stress. And he's also going to talk about ways that you can improve your performance in the workplace. Uh, Then in two weeks, we'll be talking with human rights activist. She's also a documentary filmmaker, LGBTI advocate and educator, trans mompreneur Michelle Empson, who will be sharing her heartfelt story amidst and beyond her M to F gender transition process. If you have questions for any of my upcoming guests, send them in uh, through my TeresaNicasio.com website or email. Again, my website address is TeresaNicasio.com, and the email is just Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. For today's guest, I'm so excited. We have with us the privilege of talking with internationally recognized fertility specialist and traditional Chinese medical doctor, Dr. Lauren Brown. Formerly, of all things, a chartered professional accountant, Dr. Brown is internationally known for his pioneering work as an educator and advocate for integrative fertility care. You may be familiar with uh, Dr. Brown's work uh, as a fertility expert from his TV and radio appearances, as well as his many contributions to magazines and newspapers, including The Globe and Mail and McLean's Magazine. He's also the author of The AccuBalance Fertility Diet and Missing the Point the founder and clinical director of AccuBalance Wellness Center and the chair of the Integrative Fertility Symposium, Dr. Brown was the first Canadian to be a certified fellow of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. An active presenter at fertility conferences around the world, Lauren participates on numerous boards and advisory panels as well that focus on fertility, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, and also serves as the acupuncturist advisor for IVF.ca, which is Canada's premier online fertility community. Today, uh, Dr. Lauren Brown will be talking about how food can impact human fertility both positively and negatively. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. I've been telling everybody about your show. I'm just really excited to um, to hear more about what you have to say. And thank you for inviting me and uh, thinking I may have some value to add on the fertility diet because I always think of you as a, as a food expert. So I'm, I'm glad to be here and to share what I know with your listeners. That sounds great. And I'm going to ask you to raise your voice just a little bit more so I can hear you better as well, Lauren, as we proceed. Okay. All right, I'd like to start with the obvious question. I'm sure all, the, all you listeners are wondering the same thing. How did you go from being a chartered professional accountant to a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and clinical director of a natural fertility clinic? <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the many-year-long story, I'm going to really abbreviate it. Um, so I was a, a chartered accountant. I still am. I just don't practice. And um, I ran into health issues, a lot of digestive issues. My family um, were either either in the conventional doctor system or entrepreneurs, so I went the route, the conventional medicine route, and I just didn't get resolution. And I finally went to a, a Chinese medicine doctor 
um, and, and cured. I mean, I had chronic fatigue. I had severe digestive issues. I won't go into the details, um, but it was it was quite uncomfortable and quite life interfering. Uh, the severity mm-hmm. that I, I, I had, and um, I eventually I was the controller and tax guy for some of the ocean spray, uh, ocean spray, the cranberry drink people, the farmers in British Columbia, mm-hmm. and. Um, one day I was just looking at my, my library of books, and I had an income tax act and my county um, textbook, and everything else was on health and wellness. And uh, I resigned and went back to school to become a doctor of Chinese medicine. I'd already experienced for years using the medicine for myself and taking courses out of interest, but now I went to become um, re- registered. And when I went out to set up my practice, my focus was on digestive health because that was my experience. You know, acupuncture was known for pain, so mm-hmm. I was treating pain and a lot of digestive health. And you know what comes to health practitioners, whether you're conventional or in the alternative realm? Women. Not so many men, but lots of women. Mm-hmm. And we treat holistically. So what, part of the intake when I was looking into the digestive health was their menstrual health, their gynecological health. And I started seeing a lot of women with PMS and menstrual pain. And um, I became known as the PMS guy and the women's health guy in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And then one day this woman came to my practice looking for support for her IVF, in vitro fertilization. This was back in early 2000, around 2001. And I didn't even know what IVF meant. Um, But she had been seen a fertility fertility expert by the name of Randy Lewis. She wrote the book, The Infertility Cure. And she was flying, this patient was flying from Vancouver to Houston to see Randine. Randine was prescribing herbs and acupuncture but said, it's not feasible, I need to see you weekly, you need to find somebody in Vancouver. So because I did women's health, she chose me. Randine became my mentor and literally we talked almost once a day for a year. I was her very first one-on-one student, you could say. And basically Randine would recommend for this patient the points and an herbal prescription. So I got to learn from her and I got to... Um, Um, apply the acupuncture and the herbal formulas for this woman going through an IVF. And women talk and men talk. And uh, lo and behold, by 2004, my practice was so full with reproductive health that I chose just to only treat reproductive health back in 2004. Um, And then eventually I added associates. As of today, I have eight associates. And we're famously known for reproductive health. We treat other things as well now again, but we're really well known for using an integrative approach, Chinese medicine, naturopathy, and functional medicine to treat both men and women who are trying to conceive or are already pregnant and wanting to maintain that pregnancy. What a great story, Lauren. Uh, it sounds like this you, you, were, you were really guided this way through life. You know, I, I feel that way. I feel quite blessed that I found Chinese medicine for my, for my own health um, issues. And then I never in my life thought I would be, uh, you know, an expert in treating fertility. That wasn't what um, my focus was when I when I graduated from Chinese medicine school. But I have to say I, I really love um, this demographic. I, I like supporting the women and men that are going through fertility treatment. They come in with their beautiful babies. And even the ones that end up not having babies, we do so much for them on a physical and mental level. So when they go through the process, so our, our approach, they come out of it better physically and mentally. And they have these tools like like we're going to talk later about diet and eating, that can just improve their health and uh, physical and mental health um, for the rest of their lives. And give mm-hmm. them these so so well, I feel quite blessed. Yeah, well, you know, I'm really, it's so great to be, you know, you're here in Vancouver, so we're really lucky here. Um, and I'm sure that if, you know, we do have your website and information about Lauren, folks, when you, uh, if you go to the TeresaNicasio.com website, uh, you'll see, you'll notice on the top bar, there's like the third or fourth bar over it says uh, radio shows. Just click on that and then you'll see him um, uh, for the show. Just click on his name and then you'll go to his page. Or, I guess you're listening right now as it says it's uh, playing, it's been the first few weeks here, then you may see him right on the front page of, of the website but um, but anyway there's there's links for for Lauren's website for where you know his place because if you are because I know uh, for you listeners that are on the other side of the planet uh, you may have questions about how to find someone like Lauren in your neighborhood and since Lauren teaches around the world he may have some resources so he's um, you know you listen to what he has to say today but he also might be someone you reach out to but Lauren you know as a, as a psychologist which is really my that's my primary cup of tea it's just so funny Everybody thinks that I'm a nutrition specialist and a chef, and I am. I, I do. I do. You know, I studied those things, and I uh, wrote my book, Yum. But, um, but really, the for me, the soul of it, even the soul of, of the food piece, and for, for my book, is is really about more emotional 
uh, it's almost emotional and spiritual in a way. And so could you talk a little bit about your integrative approach to fertility? And we'll get to the food part, but, but it's more than just about food, as you're alluding to just now. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'll talk about an integrative approach, and specifically I just like the fact that you talked about the emotional aspect because in Chinese medicine the number one cause of disease, this is anything, not just fertility, is usually the emotions out of balance. balance. Mm-hmm. So we really look at the emotions, and, and Chinese medicine has never separated the head from the body, and it's a holistic medicine, meaning things are bidirectional. So your, your physical body can affect your emotional health, and your thoughts and thinking and emotions can affect your physical health. So it goes both ways, bidirectional. Mm-hmm. Um, Chinese medicine cannot separate them. So the integrative approach um, that we use at our, our practice, and it's truly really integrated because we have a really good uh, professional relationship with the largest local infertility practice, conventional in Vancouver. So we talk about patients that are going through an IVF or any ART, assisted reproductive technology, with the all of fertility um, clinic that's here in Vancouver, and we actually have um, um, acupuncture treatment rooms on site there. So we have that conventional aspect. And then in our practice, we do Chinese medicine and natural and functional medicine. And so really our integrative approach, I always say it starts with a, what we call a fertility audit. Um, and I bring in my background as a chartered accountant, my auditing experience. Well, that's where that came I, from. I was wondering where that came from. That's great. And, and it's because what we found in practice is um, I really wanted to dig, right? Like, what, look for these underlying causes. It's kind of the principle of Chinese medicine and functional medicine that, you know, if you don't just chase the symptoms, don't chase the disease, treat the individual, which means look for these underlying causes. What could be causing these subtle imbalances that are keeping you from vitality and health? Because health is on a spectrum, right? We have disease, and then on the other side of the spectrum, we have vitality. And a lot of people that come into our practice, their tests are normal, so they don't get a disease diagnosis, but they're tired, they're bloated, they're cold, they may have acne, they may have infertility. Um, and so we like to do more than just the regular conventional testing. So I like to say we put into a fertility audit. We look for a lot of things. So if we can find the underlying imbalance, then we can have more of a laser-like approach versus a shotgun approach. Because, you know, you can go on the web and you can try all these things to optimize your fertility, when sometimes it's just one or two things that really need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. As the psychological aspect, it could be a lot, somebody could have a lot of trauma in their life, and really they got to work on the mind-body aspect more than anything else, right? Mm-hmm. So we have this integrated approach. So it always starts with, like, a really good fertility audit. So it's the initial where you have the interview and you really get a great history, and then there will be some tests and we run the conventional, and then some things that would not be considered conventional under the, uh, the, the in BC, our MSP, our, our medical uh, system. Mm-hmm. And our whole reason is our goal is this integrative approach. It's we're looking for a healthy baby. That's the outcome here. And um, healthy baby. That's regardless whether it happens in the bedroom or in a lab. So whether it happens naturally or through like an IVF. Our goal at the end is healthy baby. And to get a healthy baby, we need healthy egg plus healthy sperm plus healthy uterine environment. Mm-hmm. So everything we're doing that we'll share right now is how do we help the woman and the man. Reach, the, reach their peak fertility potential so that at the time of conception, the egg and the sperm are at their peak fertility potential in the woman's uterine environment so this baby has its best chance so we can help set this health blueprint um, for this future child, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're always looking at working. The integrated approach is about um, working on the healthy environment on a cellular level, so on an individual level, but on a cellular level, this healthy environment. And I'll back up two steps to, to bring in this Chinese medicine and functional medicine approach that we use. Is there's this understanding that the body has this an innate ability to heal. It has this ability to self-regulate. And when it loses that ability, that's when we have illness or other issues come up, such as infertility or premature fertility decline. And so our goal is to help the body regain its ability to self-regulate. An example is when you cut yourself, you don't need to sit and look at the cut and say, heal, heal, heal. It does it all by itself. But if you get a real serious cut, sometimes you will need stitches. Now, the stitches don't do the healing. The stitches bring the tissue together to create an environment to allow the body to do the healing. I think at AccuBounce, this approach that we do, we're like the thread. We're helping your body by creating the environment, and then your body starts to do what it needs to do, self-regulate and heal and thrive. So that's our goal, and that's mm-hmm. always our approach, is how can we support the body in its innate ability to self-regulate, to heal, 
so it can do what it's supposed to do. And if you're in your reproductive age, age span, then that should be able to, uh, to conceive and carry a baby to term. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's really, you know, I like how you put that, too. It's, and, and part of it is you could be the thread. And also, as, as a parent, you, you, if you have a cut, you wouldn't be shoving your hand in a bunch of mud and, and uh, infectious matter. You would put it in a healthier place as well. So, you know, it's, you know, that TLC that we can do that there might be some environments that are better for it than the others uh, to, do the, to follow through with the healing potential. And if I can jump on your analogy there of the mud, just to the soil idea, there's an expression in Chinese medicine, um, cultivate the soil before you plant the seed. We, we use it, nourish the soil before you plant the seed. Mm-hmm. And again, another metaphor for our listeners is, if you've ever had a plant that you've kind of neglected and it looks a little brown, withered, and basically ready ready to be tossed into the, uh, the compost, um, but have you ever... Um, been able to revive that plant by maybe adding some water or fertilizer or removing it away from the direct sunlight, and it regains its vigor, its greenness, and it goes on to give uh, fruits and flowers. I know whenever I lecture, I've done this myself, and I know when I lecture people say, yeah, I've done that. I have a plant that looks like it's, it's old and withered, and mm-hmm. it, I can bring it back to life. So you, yeah, didn't, change the ro- you didn't change the roots, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like a donor egg. The plant always had the potential to give off fruits and flowers. What you did is you, you changed the soil. You played with the environment in which the plant was in so it could reach its peak potential. It could re- go on and give off fruits and flowers. Again, that's our approach at AccuBounce is we're nourishing the soil. So the eggs for a woman, the eggs get recruited. It's about a one-year process. And like the last three to four months is that really important time during that maturation before it's um, uh, an egg is ovulated or uh, several are picked up in an IVF process. It's those last three months where the blood flow is really important, the hormonal balance is really important, the nutritional profile is really important, lack of inflammation, all these things are really important. So this, this follicle that contains the egg, when it goes through this maturation, this recruitment process over a year in the last three to four months, that environment, that soil is optimal so it can reach its peak fertility potential. So if you take a great seed and put it in sand, you're not going to get a, a great oak tree. But if you take this seed and you put it into some really good soil, it can grow into a great oak tree. Mm-hmm. So that, again, is the idea that I want the listeners to understand, that everything we're doing is about nourishing your soil, and one of them is through diet. You know, We yeah. do a lot of acupuncture in our practice, but diet and lifestyle is a cornerstone of Chinese medicine. The acupuncture and the herbal medicine and the qigong all of this are, are interventions that are important, but it's based on the fact that you're making changes to your diet and lifestyle because it's usually the diet and lifestyle that has gotten us into the imbalance. Yeah. And therefore, diet and lifestyle need to change. And then the other things act like catalysts, act like that thread to create the environment to support, to help the body get going. Sometimes the body needs a little push or a little help at the beginning to get going in its self-regulating processes again. And that's where we add the acupuncture, the laser acupuncture, the herbs, all the supplements. But the cornerstone is diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, One of our previous guests, uh, Karen Mayo, you may may have heard her show, I'm not sure, but she, one of her big things is around pH, and she talks about mindful eating and wrote a book about that. But, you know, it's, it's, again, what we eat, it's going to impact the pH. Everything, everything, we're these big chemical being, but we're also this this uh, uh, this soil, this this place of, of life. It's life giving, and we're full of life. Uh, a lot of critters that you know are not physically us, but are these other microbes uh, make us. And, and the more we can make our whole community, uh, kind of Bruce Lipton's ideas too. But you know, some yeah. of that whole community happy, then we can all work as in you know together in concert and harmony, right? Instead of working against each other for the life giving opportunity of of creating a new a new life. Agreed. Yeah. So um, real quick before, we know that we're going to have to go to a break, but can you talk a little bit about, you, you had mentioned about there was a study at Harvard uh, that was that um, really looked at some a lot of these factors that you were talking about, the hormones, nutritional profile, inflammation. Uh, can you share a little bit about that? Because that wasn't even that long ago, that study, and, and what they came no, up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so and that's what we, we based the book, The Acubalance Fertility Diet. That's what the book uh, that we offer online is based on. And it's based on this study that was in 2008. So it's, uh, um, it's the Harvard Nursing Study, and basically they made a connection between diet and, and conception and ovulation. And um, basically their claim was that they saw a six-fold increase with fertility when you followed this type of diet, where basically it is a slow-carb, 
whole food, mostly plant-based diet. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of the basis of that diet. And I'll repeat that. It's a slow carb, which we'll get into, mostly plant, um, plant-based diet um, that we based our diet on. We combined a little bit more Chinese medicine um, philosophy around diet into this diet as well that was done with the uh, Harvard Nurses Study. Wonderful. Yeah, so, I mean, six-fold, that's pretty powerful when you think about just one factor change, that the diet changed the fertility by six times of the improvement, which is amazing. Can you imagine if you could put that in a pill, right? Could, that would be, sold for a it would lot be of incredible. Some, anyway, yeah, well, but. Lauren, we need to take a little break. Uh, so, folks, more about food and fertility with Dr. Lauren Brown when we return. Stick around. We'll be right back. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 445 Six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, the same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, we've been talking with fertility expert and the clinical director of AcuBalance Wellness Center in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada, uh, Dr. Lauren Brown, and we're talking with him about his integrative approach to fertility. Uh, before the break, Lauren, you began talking about the factors that impact optimal fertility potential, a peak potential. Um, so in addition to the other lifestyle factors, you know, you're talking a little bit about stress and emotional factors. Uh, and, and I know from your other materials that uh, I have your, this book that you have online, which anybody can download. We'll talk about more about that after. But um, things like our sense of community, all these things are important. But if we can focus a little bit on how our diet can impact our peak fertility potential. And you were talking about factors like blood flow, hormones, nutrition and inflammation. Can we, can we start with inflammation? Because I know that's kind of the biggie that we're, that's really in the news these days. Can you talk about which foods are more inflammatory and which ones might help reduce inflammation? Yeah, definitely. And I'll, I'll, I'll start off with just, again, reminding people why the diet's important or why your emotions are important. Because, it, again, it's just one approach to playing with the environment. So 
So to reach your peak fertility potential, to have this um, higher chance of conceiving a healthy baby, we want this ovarian environment to have a reduction in inflammation. So if you're inflamed, it's not good for your fertility. If your hormones are imbalanced, it's not good. If you don't have good blood flow, if you have chemicals that act as, as endocrine disruptors, so they're affecting your hormone balance, it's not great. So all the things that we're doing is about increasing blood flow to your follicles and uterine lining. So if there's more blood going to the lining, there's more oxygen, more nutrients, more hormones, this will help with follicular development and also help build a nice, thick, rich, receptive lining. Um, so all this stuff is really what we're doing. Everything when we say, so why should we exercise or so why should we have community or why should we worry about our stress, it's how does it impact your hormones, how does it impact your blood flow, how does it impact inflammation, acidity and alkalinity like we talked about earlier, all this stuff, how's it in playing with the environment, the soil, so you can reach your peak fertility potential on a cellular level, which an egg and sperm are a cell. So now going to the diet. So just, and you wanted to address inflammation right off the bat. So with inflammation, and I've heard a really neat, I just heard this recently, a scientific term, it's called inflammaging, which is, which is a really interesting term, because what we're realizing with systemic inflammation, and what I often share in my, in my lectures when I see my patients is, this Chronic low-grade systemic inflammation is causing accelerated biological aging, which is leading us to die earlier and die of degenerative diseases. And I often add, and is causing um, premature fertility decline. So the mm-hmm. body, from a Chinese medicine perspective, is supposed to live about 100 to 120 years. And we're supposed to be able to conceive until we go into menopause. But we're dying in our 70s and 80s, and we're dying sick, and we're having seen people having fertility issues in their 20s and 30s, let alone their 40s. Mm-hmm. So this inflammation, inflammation is affecting us on a biological level. You have a chronological age. So I have a patient that came in um, age 40. Um, she had what's called a lower ovarian reserve. She didn't respond well to her IVF. She also had constipation. She was overweight, severe PMS and painful periods, and lots of stress, really cold and constipated. We treated her over three months. She lost 12 pounds. We didn't count calories. We put her on the AccuBalance Fertility Diet. We did acupuncture herbs. She warmed up. Her, she lost 12 pounds. Her bowels got regular. Her PMS went away. Her painful periods diminished. She felt calm, slept better. And then she did another IVF. Remember the previous one, they almost canceled and, and was unsuccessful. The next IVF, she had twins. She came wow. to us chronologically 40, but biologically 50. And so we're always trying to help you become biologically your age again. So if you're chronologically... 40, we want to make sure you're biologically 40 because 40 year young women can have babies. And inflammation is one of those things that's going to cause you to get biologically older. And we don't like that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There's a new book out called The Telomere Effect where they've done a lot of research on diet and your emotion, stress, how they affect the length of your telomeres. And without going into detail, if your telomeres are shortening at accelerated rates, then your lifespan is shortening and also your immune system. And there's that whole thing of accelerated biological aging. So mm-hmm. that's why inflammation is an issue. It leads to um, skin issues. It leads to fertility issues, painful issues, anxiety, depression issues. It's everywhere. They were even linking it to cancer and Alzheimer's and other uh, degenerative diseases as well. So often these things that were considered age-related diseases are starting to be known as lifestyle-related diseases. Mm-hmm. So how does food affect it? Well, if you're eating food that's pro-inflammatory, so think of the processed foods, the refined flours, um, excessive alcohol, these things can have an inflammatory response in your body. But sometimes healthy foods, too, that we consider healthy can be inflammatory. If you have a sensitivity to a food, I know some of your speakers you've had, people do talks on gluten sensitivity. Mm-hmm. If you're not, if you don't have, you, might, you don't have to have celiac, but if you're reacting to your food, whether it's a peanut, whether it's gluten, whether it's apples, then that's going to create an inflammatory response. So although apples may be really healthy for most people, if you have a, if you have a sensitivity to it, then it's going to create inflammation. Mm-hmm. So your food can become inflammation. So the foods that are cooling that help calm inflammation, no surprise to many of your listeners, are the green leafy vegetables. It's the vegetable families, right? They tend to be more of a, a, a cooling one. The you know meats have been known to be more inflammatory, but again, what I find and where I differ in some of the people when they talk about diets. I'm, I'm not pro or anti-meat. Um, what I'm pro on is that you eat grass-fed beef versus, versus grain-fed um, mm-hmm. beef. 
And it's about it's about the amounts. It's about the quality amounts. So if you're eating all meat, no vegetables, I think that can lead to probably some inflammatory issues. You get into that Atkins type diet. But if your plate's half full of vegetables, then I think you're going to be okay because that's the issue, in my opinion, is the lack of vegetables, the lack of fiber, the lack of green leafy vegetables that we eat, and instead have too much meat or simple carbs. Mm-hmm. So really, you know, this is. I know we'll talk about this again, but it's the pillars of what I call the diet, the AccuBalance fertility diet is, you know, stay away from the processed food and the refined flours. Don't eat, don't add sugar to your diet. It's okay if you have fruit, but you don't want to be adding sugar to your recipes or to your, or to your diet. Make sure you're getting lots of vegetables. Your beverages should come from water or herbal tea. And it's okay, yes, to good fats. Those are your almonds, your nuts and seeds, and your avocados and fish. And yes, to healthy protein. Again, fish and grass-fed beef, you know, non-antibiotic, non-hormone-raised animals that are fed food that's meant to be in their diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, the inflammation, as you were mentioning, it can also trigger... Uh, you know, if the body's got the inflammation, then that creates an inner stressor, and so then that also speaks a little bit to some of the hormonal uh, implications, uh, hormonal dis, uh, dis, uh, imbalance. Is that correct? Sure. Well, inflammation, cortisol to the rescue, and that affects your insulin, um, your mm-hmm. your, um, your insulin, your blood sugars. So mm-hmm. all the wreaks havoc. You know, there is... Um, you know, just to talk about the, the, the inflammation or even to go into the hormone side, the hormone balance side, is if you're eating like a lot of processed foods, refined flour, sugars, things that cause your blood sugar to spike, then you're pulling on insulin a lot, right? And if you're having these peaks all the time, then this can wreak havoc on your body. And some people, your listeners that have fertility issues may be aware of polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, PCOS, or mm-hmm. anovatory androgen access is another term it's been called. And that's a severe issue with the insulin issue, right? So, you know, remember the spectrum of health? There's vitality on one side, the disease on the other, and then there's this in-between range where your labs may look normal, but you're having issues. And so you don't need to be diagnosed with PCOS to have to change your diet because that's the first thing they do is get you off of the sugary diet, right, the low, the, the fast-carb diet, because things that spike your insulin are going to be bad for that condition. Even general, if you're wanting to optimize your fertility, so to reach your peak fertility potential, you're going to want to keep your hormones in balance. And I would say the two main reasons for hormones getting out of balance when we're looking at the sex hormones and fertility, the two main ones would be one is due to stress. So your stress hormones will pull on your sex hormones. So if you're constantly on stress and having cortisol in your system, then that's going to pull on progesterone and it's going to impact, it's going to impact the mother hormone all the way up from pregnenolone. Pregnenolone goes down to um, DHA and across to you got progesterone and you get your sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone to simplify it. If your body's always in this fight or flight, you're under stress, Cortisol is being pulled, so stress does it that way. Also, when you're under a lot of stress, cortisol, again, is a glucocorticosteroid, so it's going to affect your blood sugar balance. If you don't sleep well at night, that's a stress on your body. It's going to cause the cortisol to rise as well. It's going to affect your blood sugar. That's why if you're ever trying to lose weight, sleep is good for you because if you don't sleep well and you're not getting enough sleep, you can affect your blood sugar levels. So your emotions are one level that can affect it. The other stress hormones, too, um, the adrenaline, they're leading to inflammation in the body. So the stress can cause the inflammation. Yeah. Then you go back to the, um, the diet is the other one. If you're eating foods that are just void of nutrients and they're processed, or you're eating foods that are inflammatory or that you have a sensitivity to, so they create inflammation, then they're also going to cause your hormones to go out of balance. Great. Well, this is fantastic information. Uh, Lauren, we're going to need to take another short break. So, folks, after the break, Lauren's going to talk with us um, more about, he's going to carry on more about these uh, peak uh, fertility potential uh, factors um, and also a little bit more about the main pillars of the AccuBalance diet. So stick around. Don't go away. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yum. Foodforliving.com.
When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we explore ways we can support each other and work together to help make the world a kinder and healthier place. We've been uh, here with us today with the clinical director of AccuBalance Wellness Center, uh, Dr. Lauren Brown, and he's been talking about how food can impact human fertility. Um, so before the break, Lauren, you were talking about uh, the role of food in successful conception um, and fertility in general. And uh, one of the things we were talking about during break was, um, you know, there was one thing, it was about quite a question about soy. I was asking you about soy, and you had a, a couple of thoughts about soy. And you, do you want to mention what those are? Yeah, so when people ask, especially the vegetarians, can I eat soy or not eat soy, we just want you to eat as much as a whole food type diet. So the more processed it is, it's going away from that fertility diet. So just make sure your soy is either sprouted or fermented. So you know you got miso um, or sprouted. And you got to be careful because some of the milks or some of the tofus could be overly processed. So that's basically my main point or two around the soy is, is it more around the uh, – the, the quality and is it more fermented and sprouted versus processed? Yeah. And, you know, some of the soy milks have sugars added to it, and, and now we've added sugar, so now we've taken something that could be healthy and we've made it not healthy. Yeah, you know, I think that's really a good point too. So when you're when you're getting things, sometimes you think on the on the surface it's it's fine, but really read the label because sometimes sugar is thrown into the weirdest places. Uh, anyway, my husband just bought some um, uh, some pasta sauce that uh, from the store recently, and um, uh, you know, just doing a quick and dirty, he was making something, and I tasted a bite. I said, "Did you add a bunch of sugar to this?" And he said, "No." I said, "This is full of sugar," and then he said, "No." Uh, he had never bought this before, you know, and whatever. He looked the bottle and literally it's the second ingredient i mean yeah. they, say, well, they, they say tomatoes <laughs> in two different ways and then the, and then yeah. they say sugar and you know it's the same thing people come up with i'm, I'm eating gluten-free snacks mm-hmm. but gluten-free okay gluten-free doesn't mean healthy you know that means nothing full of, yeah so it's, it could be loaded with sugar right and therefore right. it has no health health benefit right so when so, everything says something free of something all it means is it doesn't have something but it doesn't necessarily say what it does have in it which right. is a whole other conversation. But I wonder if you could just uh, go through a little bit about, um, uh, you know, the other thing we t- you mentioned, something about coffee and alcohol, and, and uh, as Jay was pointing yeah, out, to that, 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 that's another, common food group. <laughs> another coffee food group, as you, your producer said. So this is my approach to coffee and alcohol. There is research that if you're drinking too much coffee, I think the latest is like two cups a day could increase your chance of miscarriage. Too much alcohol for men and for women also has been shown to affect fertility. But then you look at places in France where they drink throughout the pregnancy, and, and they seem, I think they seem okay. So what to do, what not to do. Here's how I, I address this issue. If, you're, you, if you need the coffee to get you going in the morning, if, it's a, if you're using it as a stimulant, basically like a drug, then you should go off the coffee. If you stop coffee and you get headaches, you get jittery and you're exhausted, then you're using it as a stimulant. Now, if you enjoy a cup of coffee and you go with your friends and it's social and you can take it or leave it, then community is healthy and it's healthy for you having community, and I think it's fine for you to drink that cup or two coffee a day. Now, if you start to add the sugar and the, all that uh, sugar and fat and weird things into a coffee, you know, you go to a Starbucks, and it's a caramel lacchiato and it has some coffee in it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about <laughs> coffee, right? Because that's adding sugar to it again. So I'm, I'm not saying you can have all those 
uh, sugary drinks. I'm saying black coffee, if you enjoy having that with some friends, um, go for it. But, again, if you're using it as a stimulant, I suggest you go off it. It's, it's, it's just masking how you really feel. So Same thing for uh, Lauren, you're telling people who, who feel addicted to coffee, who really need it and want it most, not to have it, but those who really don't care can have <laughs> Exactly. But, you know, that's usually the case, right? You know, it's your food, even not coffee, things that you crave all the time, you probably have a sensitivity to it. You're craving it all the time. It's probably actually not working well for you. Something that you crave once in a blue moon, you probably need it. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's a little uh, thing I check in my clinic. So somebody says, oh, I love tomatoes. I have to have them all the time. Then I, we do blood tests for food sensitivities, but I would, just, I would do a, a rotation diet with this person. If they didn't do the blood test, I would suspect they're allergic to tomatoes as in a sensitivity, not a, a allergic reaction, but an inflammatory um, sensitivity because they're craving it. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is a vegetarian, they say, I crave steak, I bet they need something in that steak, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just a little... Um, trick that I use to kind of assess whether somebody is having that sensitivity to it or they really need it. Going to the alcohol is the same idea, though. Unfortunately, if if you um, if you have a drink of wine at night with your friends, your spouse, your whoever, and it's social and you nurse it throughout the night and you're enjoying it, keep go- keep doing it. Um, however, if you need it to sleep, to unwind, then you're using it as a sedative, as a drug, and you need to go off the alcohol. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I tell my patients. I don't say whether they can or cannot. I say if you're using it this way, yes or no. If you're using it this way, yes or no. Mm-hmm. Now, in pregnancy, they don't know if there's a safe amount. Like I say, in France, they seem to drink throughout the pregnancy. So I would put caution in the wind that after you think you've ovulated and you might have conceived, to be very careful of drinking. And then there's moderation and excess. We know for sure, it's easy to study this in men, that if men have a few drinks, not a big issue. But if a man has an, a, a scene that, you know, you get drunk, then um, that seems, seems to be um, negatively impact the sperm. Kind of think of it as that, you know, the way you're, the way the man is, um, is walking, you know, and feeling, can he drive? Probably how his sperm is moving, right? It can't make it to the egg. You know, it's a little too drug. You can't, you can't find the car keys, which you shouldn't, um, because it's had too much to drink. You don't want to so, slow, don't want to slow that motility down. Don't want to slow that motility yeah. down, right? It starts to go in circles. It may not make it to the egg. So that's yeah, kind of yeah. my, well, that's how I counsel people on, on the alcohol and on the coffee and on the soy based on that. Based right. on your and, you know, you talked about uh, several of the principles, the main pillars of the AccuBalance diet a little bit ago. Just to, uh, but just so you know, folks, uh, this is so wonderful. Lauren has written this whole book, and it's free. You just go to his page. So if you go to um, right on, on my the profile page at uh and you, and you click on Lauren's profile page, on that page you just click on the little picture of, of the, the book, and you can can download the book and it's all free and it's actually got tons of beautiful information really really beautiful information um, so I'm going to suggest you um, you do that and you can get information said here as well as a whole lot more um, but one one more thing I was wondering if you could just uh, just share with us a little bit is you were talking about how at AccuBalance you were telling me about how you were doing um, you're bringing in this this innovative laser element to help with, with blood yeah. flow. So there's acupuncture which helps with blood flow, but you're mentioning that there's... The laser, like, the cold laser. So it's called low, yeah, yeah, so it's called it's low-level laser um, therapy, LLLT, or cold laser. And I say this because there's class 1, 2, 3, 4, and up, and this is class 3, it's non-heating, that's why they call it cold laser, it can't burn the skin. It, 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 you know, that's, that's very important because lasers can fall under a broad spectrum of devices. And so acupuncture has been shown to increase blood flow to the reproductive system. Stress reduction, it can um, increase blood flow to the reproductive system. And we're really excited about the laser that we're pioneering here in Vancouver, Canada. I brought this back from Asia and um, Europe. And what the laser has been shown to do is it seems to rejuvenate um, the women, um, older women's eggs or anybody women's eggs. And the reason it's doing this is threefold. One is it increases ATP, energy of the cell. So that is huge. That's why so many, mm. if you go to a reproductive endocrinologist or somebody like us, will say take coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 helps, incru- helps um, the mitochondria regain that um, functioning, producing the ATP. Well, laser, the light gets absorbed into the cell, the photons, and it, it causes a chemical reaction to re- produce more ATP. So the cellular energy comes back, and that's the main issue for older women is that the older eggs, they don't, they don't divide properly when they become embryos. That's what they need, the energy of the mitochondria to keep them dividing until it implants and has a placenta to feed it. That's the issue, one of the main issues, and so it seems that laser can help with this. The other thing laser does is it helps regulate inflammation. We talked a lot about inflammation, so it helps with that low-grade systemic inflammation, 
and it also helps increase blood flow. So wow. we really are excited at AccuBalance using this cold laser as part of our egg quality protocol because it's going to increase blood flow, it helps regulate inflammation, and it increases ATP. And when we combine that with diet, lifestyle, acupuncture, and supplements, we feel it's a really good way to nourish that soil before you plant the seed, whether you're trying to conceive naturally or with IVF. Wow, that sounds amazing. And, and, you know, for people who maybe don't have access to the laser, uh, you're talking about the ATP and the energy. Is it possible that something like uh, Reiki or some of the energy-based uh, hands-on, the light-based healing uh, might be useful as well? You know, possible. I've never looked at any research on it. I know there's research on the cold laser for working with severe infertility. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that's been demonstrated. The mechanism has been demonstrated, but it's also been done just a few studies, one out of Japan and one in, um, in Denmark, for improving fertility, right, outcomes. So I don't know about the Reiki, but there's yeah, lots of things for, I mean, for ATP production. It's and harder to, to, to modulate right? the, the exact amount of the light energy, but, I, but as you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, there's, there's, this is a very interesting innovation. Yeah, I don't know if anybody uh, has, has measured it. So impossible, yes. You know, taking the, uh, good gut health, um, probiotic, having a um, good diet, anything that is negative towards the mitochondria, the energy of the cell, is bad, and anything that's good for it is kind of good for it, right? It's just, mm -hmm. The laser is one of those interventions that has really been shown to help with ATP production, and it's so safe and non-invasive. It's light therapy, right? It's just the cells, um, the photons go in, and uh, cytochrome C, and it turns into uh, beautiful ATP production. And so that's why it's used so mm -hmm. You know, it's been known for injuries and pain to help the cell um, recover its, its innate ability to heal. Remember, this was the approach at AccuBalance Chinese medicine is help the body self-regulate, find that innate ability to heal. Well, basically, to me, the laser is kind of recharging the cell somewhat. So right. hopefully we're helping the cells get uh, younger biologically. That's, that's what we're hoping true. to see when we do this here at AccuBalance now that we brought the uh, lasers and the protocol to Vancouver. You might have to get a few more buildings uh, with people coming to your, to your, uh, to your center. <laughs> anyway, Lauren, we, we need to take uh, one more break, folks, but Lauren is going to be joining us for the Because You Ask segment, so stick around. Don't go away. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. Six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine genes that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has genes for you, too. Click through to Lee's Genes on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604 Four four five sixty four sixty three. That's six zero four 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 five sixty four sixty three. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten free lifestyle. Even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine, health tips, easy allergy free recipes, and creative culinary inventions. The award winning book Yum by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum. Plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net.
Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate life, love, and kindness while also acknowledging the real challenges that are a natural part of living and answer questions that matter to you. Uh, so this is a part of the show where we can address your questions uh, that you send in to me. Um, and uh, some of you specifically have been sending in for certain guests and others just send me questions. But today Dr. Lauren Brown is uh, here from AccuBalance in Vancouver, and he's going to help respond to today's question, which is very much relevant. Uh, it's the question is, my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant for the past year, but are starting to get concerned. I'm 33 and he's 37. Is it possible that smoking weed is part of the problem? Since trying to get pregnant, I stopped using, but my husband is still smoking pretty regularly. Is there anything we can do to help us get pregnant? Yes. Your thoughts, Lauren? <laughs> yes, he has to stop smoking weed. That's a big question here in Vancouver. <laughs> yes. So, I hear about a lot with a lot of my clients. Actually, this is this has come up as an issue as well. Yeah, it's it's fairly definitive in the research up to date. Anyhow, that uh, smoking marijuana has, is estrogenic and it is bad for sperm. It's the bad beauty for is sperm, men are okay. yeah men are making and and his secondhand smoke could be affecting your egg quality as well. You know, um, men are always making sperm, right? Like they say, uh, uh, close to fifteen hundred every heartbeat. So wow. the good news is if he stops smoking, if he stops smoking. Three months later, he could start having really good sperm, right? Mm. He's not having great sperm now. So um, I would say, I mean, it's, it's just simple. What can we do? You can't have your cake and eat it. He has to stop smoking marijuana. There's no, I can't get around it. So he, um, or donor sperm, right? Um, so I think he'll, that maybe motivate him to stop smoking the marijuana. It is not good for sperm. Mm-hmm. That was a simple question. But it's just, it's not, it's not a negotiable. If you want to have a child and have a nice, healthy child, um, he and the women should not be smoking uh, marijuana for both. The conception. Well, so you're saying yeah. about three months. So if uh, if three a months. couple's been um, uh, smoking, then for both, uh, you say it's about a three month window for the women as well in terms of stopping, or um, or is it longer or shorter? I think uh, well, you know, most of it's on the men's side. You know, we know smoking impacts the uh, the A quality of women. Um, mm-hmm. So. It's the same thing, you know. Weight, if you're if you're severely overweight, um, very high BMI, um, that affects uh, fertility and pregnancy outcomes. There's maybe even a link to autism. So this is that lifestyle thing. There's just certain things that um, need to change if you want to reach your peak fertility potential. There's the mental, emotional, and then there's how you eat, exercise, rest, sleep. All these things create health or can take you away from health. So it's on that spectrum of disease to vitality. Yeah. So this question is a real simple one. Um, it's just he has to stop smoking marijuana. Just real quick, um, you're just mentioning you threw in that autism word. <laughs> that's, that's a biggie. Uh, what, what did you say that there's there's the potential implications around that? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, they're starting to link certain uh, things in men, uh, paternal age, you know, so the age of the father, the autism, and their, and and some obesity factors, possibly the autism. You know, there's these correlations. You know, of the, so. of the father's obesity. The mother's obesity um, and the father's age. The father's age? Yeah. Interesting. I hadn't heard that, that linking to um, autism. Yeah, I'm, I'm, as we speak, I'm looking to see. I'm giving a talk in Germany as we're, as we're doing this interview. I'm preparing a talk to do in Germany. And uh, um, advanced paternal age associated with sperm epigenetic abnormalities implicating neurological disorders suggested a mechanism for increased prevalence in offspring from older fathers. Um, they talk about environmental, so endocrine um, disruptors, chemicals in the in the environment, also affect affect the guy. Um, there's a lot of stuff I came across when I was doing the research for this on smoking in general um, that affects the sperm quality and epigenetics. So um, these are things. And again, it's it's, it's a, there's a link. It doesn't mean oh, if you're overweight, you're going to have a child with autism, of or if your husband's 50, you're going to. I mean, there's lots of men having children in their 60s or 70s, and their children. Are fine. Totally fine. It's the it's always the risk factor. What can we do to push the scale towards vitality and away from disease? What can we do to give our child its best start? Yeah. So you want to be biologically as young as possible, and you want to be physically, if you can, in, in better shape, fit weight wise as well, but waist circumference, and um, you don't want to be smoking marijuana. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it with, with regular cigarettes as well. What um, it's that's becoming less and less of an issue, particularly here in in Canada. Although it's certainly not a non-issue, uh, but this, the amount of smoking has gone down. I know you're going to Germany where there's a whole lot more smoking uh, yeah. in Europe and such. Uh, what, what's the what's the latest in terms of your knowledge around uh, smoking and issues around fertility and and uh, health for the child? 
it damages the egg and it damages the sperm. So it can lead to, A, they're not getting pregnant or, again, um, you know, health issues for the child. I don't know off by hand what, you know, what they're seeing in the, in the offspring. Um, mm-hmm. nothing, you know, I'd have to look, look that up. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if it's damaging the, the DNA, you know, of the egg and the sperm, then um, that's, that's where we get, that's not, that's not good. That, yeah. that a, it may not even get to the, the, the getting to the child if you're having that kind of. Um, but uh, what I'm issue. curious about you're mentioning with the, with the uh, marijuana that about three months if, after about three months that the the father's sperm can be quite a bit healthier. Is that you think that's about the same window if if say a dad a potential dad stops smoking within about three months or do you think it's a, a longer period or shorter? The reason I say three months is it takes sperm because um, we're making it right. It's not like we a woman has all their eggs and then they, they get recruited and matured, True. men make sperm, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a 72 to 90 day process. So if we go abracadabra and everything's in balance, mm-hmm. then 72 to 90 days, these would be good sperm. Now in reality, we can't do abracadabra. You stop smoking, but the body has to throw off the chemicals. You gotta detox and you gotta get this out of the cells and out of the blood. So your soil is still not ideal the day you stop smoking because mm-hmm. there's remnants and it's gonna take time for the body to move this out of the soil of your body, right? use that analogy. So I always say abracadabra, you know, you would notice it in three months, but some people will take longer. Depending on their health and where they're at, it may take longer to create that healthy environment that the sperm will develop in, right, that grows and matures in. So um, if you stop smoking today, tomorrow that environment is still probably pretty suboptimal. Right. Great. Well, you know, Lauren, this has been so great having you here today. I want to thank you for joining us and sharing what you know and taking time out of your very busy schedule and all your travel around the world. And um, uh, any last thoughts before we we uh, up? Just that um, there's so much you can do on your own through diet, lifestyle. I mentioned lifestyle is um, adequate rest, moderate exercise, deep sufficient sleep, and then stress reduction tools and um, and community, finding that connection with your community. All of this has been shown to help you with your health. And that book I mentioned earlier, The Telomere Effect, in my opinion, validates what Chinese medicine says and what we do at AccuBounce to help people live longer and healthier and help them reach their peak fertility potential to give their child the best health blueprint they possibly can. Great. So this Telomere Effect book, uh, we'll, we'll get the uh, link. Maybe you can send it to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll put, uh, put that on the website. Folks, this is uh, thank you all for joining us today for today's program. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, remember, you can send in your questions about stress, nutrition, or performance for next week's guest. And then um, you can also send any any questions for any of our upcoming guests as well by clicking on the Ask Teresa tab on my website. Uh, it's TeresaNicasio.com. I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, have a great week.